I know now that I can recreate what I wanted to from the reference photo, that golden shimmering look. So I'm happy with that. That's calmed me down a bit. <laughs> okay, so now I can speed it all back up because what I'm going to do is do the under the blocking in stage. So just like I did on that other section of fur, got those Conti sticks, and I'm going to start to pretty quickly just block all this in. So blocking in again. This is where you can see with the Conti sticks, they save a lot of pencil for this blocking in, and because they're that you know a lot thicker. But not really thick you know some of the pastels are very very thick I wanted something that I could easily handle that would allow a you know wider stroke wider than the pencil but not you know massively wide and the Conti 6 were great and you can also I know it seems a shame to do it but if you want something wider again on it you can snap these sticks in half or in a quarter use them on their sides as well I like to because I wanted to create texture, I'm using them more like a pencil because it's giving me that, you know, roughness and that textured look exactly what I wanted, rather than a smooth look. Perhaps if I was doing a, a one coloured background, I wanted it to be very, very smooth, then I could use it on its side. Lots asked me as well if I seal the finished drawing. So far, I don't because I haven't come across a pastel fixative that doesn't you know really alter the appearance um, the pastel mat as well grabs the pastel so much you know it doesn't really need sealing not like with other papers such as the a Velo which would easily rub off or if you dropped it you know you could lose your drawing um, the pastel mat grabs it that much more so as long as somebody's not going to deliberately wipe hard across the surface it's, it's not going to be ruined if I find a, a spray fixative that works and actually seals it on me and doesn't alter it much at all then I, I would start using it but uh, so far I haven't found that. The ones that don't really alter the colour much don't actually seal it either. When you've got to spray a few coats to actually get the seal then the colours and the uh, tones are altered. Okay, so once again, back down to normal speed. That dark blocking in is done. The critical thing to remember was to keep the pastel sticks going in the third direction. But make sure as well, now I've picked up the pencils, I'm starting to overlay. Watch for your brain actually making or trying to make you keep everything regimented and in line. And you'll end up, if you don't be careful, you're going to end up with fur strokes that look like a picket fence. And you've probably seen those, plenty of those on the internet, where everything is straight. Now your mind, or my mind at least, tries to keep everything like that regimented. So I've got to be careful that, you know, there's slight variances. Not everything is going in the same direction. The diagonals and the angles of the fur, that's what's creating the shape and the form that's underneath. Remember, you know, there's a skeleton under this and a structure that's three-dimensional, so that's what we've got to be looking to do. I'm looking to follow the anatomy of the animal. But look how quick with pastel this is taking shape and coming alive. That's the thing I love about it. You know, it's a fairly big drawing. If I was doing this in coloured pencil to this kind of detail, it would take me hours and hours and hours. If I could even do it, you know, because a lot of those light marks, you could have to work negatively and draw around them and leave them. and oh, It's just too much hassle for me. I, I really got absolute respect for people that do colored pencils and spend perhaps 100 and 200 hours working in between all these little fur areas and highlights. Personally, I haven't got the patience for that. It, it takes away a lot of my enjoyment to know that I've got to spend so much time doing one piece. And it seems more natural that because the fur overlaps on the animal in real life, to select the medium that you can overlap. Rather than a medium that, that you can't overlap light over dark easily. 
So here I am building up this layer again. I've got that pencil that's kind of a similar to a raw sienna. Overlapping the first strokes, being careful that I'm not obliterating all of the underdrawing. You know, remember they was the shadows that I've just put in, in between the more highlighted fur. So I don't want to wipe out and completely go over all those shadows they was done for a purpose. Now, this is the mid-tone fur. On top of that then we'll go the light tones, pricking out the highlights. So fur has got a layer, or many layers, that's giving it depth. By doing that with a pencil, I'm creating that same appearance of depth. Now you see as well, I'm not sharpening the pencils. Well, I haven't sharpened them. So they last quite a while. I'm not picking out, you know, very fine haze yet. So when it's going a bit blunt, that's fine by me. It's okay. But uh, these Carbothellos, you know, they're firm enough not to keep wearing out. If I have a very, very soft pastel pencil, you're going to deposit a lot of pastel on there all the time and it's going to wear down very quickly too. There's some wonderful pencils out there that can be very, very expensive. The thing I like about these Carbothellos, superb quality and a good, really good price as well. Over on my YouTube channel, I go through all the supplies in detail. I've tested out lots of different pencils now so you can uh, make a decision yourself. It matters as well the type of paper, that's critical. Pastel matte and these Carbothellos work perfect together. The Carbothellos and Vela or Velo not so good. I haven't had a good experience with that at all. But if you use very expensive Caran d'Ache pencils and use them with the Vela paper, works much, much better because it's a softer pastel. Okay, going lighter now. That's looking pretty good. That's looking like it's got depth to the fur. So just assessing what I've got so far, picking up the lighter pencil Again, some of these highlights on top now. So I've sharpened that pencil up a little bit because I want those sharper, finer haze. And these are probably not the final ones yet. I work on the other half of the face and um, as usual with my process, I'll, I'll look at it as a whole then and start to go lighter and lighter and lighter and punch up the darks as well usually. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully you've learned something from pastels because I'm learning all the time. So hopefully it's of use to all of us. And I'll see you again real soon for some more wildlife art videos.